Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is the start of a new series. This is the Sky and Telescope author series. We're going to walk through a Sky and Telescope article. And I'm super happy to have Rosalie Lopez with us today. Hi, Rosalie. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Nice to be here. Super. Where are you at? Ge what's your geolocation? Uh, I'm in Pasadena, California, Pasadena. in my house. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Newswise, California is having a number of fires. Do you have any around you this time around? Uh, you know, uh, just about 10 days ago, there was one. Um, oh, it was not anywhere close to me, but I could smell the smoke mm. for a couple of days, and that was nasty. Uh, but, uh, you know, now around here all seems to be, you know, fine. <laughs> So uh, we always have problems with uh, fires, but it tends to be in the fall. Yeah, when it dries out and the Santa Ana's roll through, local weather phenomena, people. Um, so I take it you're not in your office. You look like you're at home and you have a pretty awesome bookshelf there behind you. Uh, is, is JPL open these days in the pandemic or generally closed or? Uh, well, it. It's open for mission essential personnel okay. and uh, various people who actually absolutely have to work mm -hmm. in their laboratories. You know, they have a shift system. They, uh, they, you know, they have been really following the guidelines for Los Angeles County and uh, being very safe. But people like me who can work from home, <laughs> I'm working from home and expect to be doing that for a few more months. Yep, same here, same here. Rosalie, what do you like to do for research? Well, I'm a planetary volcanologist. Uh, so I like volcanoes. Uh, I like volcanoes on Earth as well. And uh, I've been to quite a few of them. And I like volcanoes uh, on Mars and Io and the outer solar system, cryovolcanoes. Cool, cool. Uh, and that will, I guess, lead us into this really lovely Sky and Telescope article on ice volcanoes. So Rosalie, take us away. All right, well, um, uh, ice volcanoes, uh, also we call them cryovolcanoes, and the phenomenon is a cryovolcanism. Uh, well, you know, I, Maybe I won't follow the article exactly, but um, you know, I'll, I'll just start by explaining that um, cryovolcanism is volcanism because it's a process that brings material from the interior of an icy moon to the surface. That, that's why it's volcanism, because volcanism by definition is a process that brings material from inside uh, under the crust uh, of a planetary body to the surface. Uh, now, on Earth and uh, most of the planets and also Io, uh, we um, have volcanism of the, the type that we see on Earth. The magma is molten rock. But uh, on these icy moons of the outer solar system, the magma is actually water. And why is that is because you have an ice crust and under this ice crust, you have water. Uh, that's why we call them ocean worlds. They have oceans of liquid water under ice crusts. Cool. So if the um, material from that subsurface ocean can come up to the surface, that's volcanism and we call it cryovolcanism. So that's the difference between traditional volcanoes, which I love too. <laughs> I love going to volcanoes on Earth. Uh, and uh, cryovolcanism, we, we don't have cryovolcanism on Earth. So that's a, a really uh, you know, different uh, mm -hmm. process. And it illustrates how uh, when we explore space, uh, we really learn more about what what's possible in, in geology and in, in physical processes because um, we don't have everything on Earth. So uh, maybe we can uh, start with a bit of history, you know, maybe stay on that page. And um, Voyager. Yeah, because, 
Well, when Voyager uh, uh, got to um, Saturn, I, uh, oh, you know, I was still uh, uh, working on my PhD. Uh, so I didn't participate <laughs> uh, in that mission, but it was very exciting. And, uh, um, uh, and, and Voyager found uh, uh, that the surface of Europa, for example, uh, looked a bit like a cracked egg. There was this icy surface, but it had all these cracks and lineaments. And the idea of cryovolcanism started floating uh, around then. And then they got to, in, uh, they, they looked at Enceladus, uh, moon of Saturn, and uh, they didn't see any cryovolcanism. Um, they did not image the southern uh, polar regions where later with Cassini we found cryovolcanism. But they did notice that Enceladus was very, very bright. Uh, I mean, that was known even from Earth, from uh, radar observations. Enceladus is so bright, it's like very fresh ice. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there were some mysteries there. Um, and then Voyager got to uh, Neptune uh, and, uh, and, and saw plumes at Triton, and that was really exciting. And that's where the idea of cryovolcanism was really, really took flight <laughs> and yeah. such. Uh, even though, well, well, we'll get into that later, but, you know, there is still some doubt what, um, uh, whether Triton has true cryovolcanism or, or something else. But uh, the picture you see here was taken from Cassini, and I worked on the Cassini mission, so I was lucky enough to be, uh, in a part uh, of, uh, of those discoveries. Uh, I was working on the Cassini uh, satellites uh, team, and, uh, um, you know, it, it was a very exciting time. So let me uh, ask a question about this, this image. What is, what is this uh, man-made looking object here? Oh, that's just, uh, is that supposed to be Cassini? And that's like a, a, an artist's impression. Got it. Of, you know, Cassini Post. flying through uh, this, um, uh, this plume of Enceladus. Mm. Uh, so let's go to the next page. Mm. Ground tour. Yeah, so. Um, what, was your, uh, what was your PhD thesis on then? Oh, actually, it was on Mars. Um, I was uh, uh, comparing volcanic processes on Earth and Mars. Okay. And uh, um, I did a lot on lava flow modeling uh, for Earth as well, when we were trying to find out how uh, lava flows developed on Mars, what was the effusion rate, and so on. And I used Viking data. Mm -hmm. And then an interesting thing is that I came to JPL um, to uh, um, uh, work on um, uh, on Mars and still with Viking data. And then <laughs> people told me at that time, uh, I came in 1989 as a postdoc, late 1989. Um, so by like the, you know, 1990, I was thinking of getting a job at JPL, I wanted to stay. And various people told me, if you want to stay here, you, you're going to have to do something else because we're never going to go back to Mars. You know, Mars is dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Prediction, <laughs> prediction. <laughs> and that's how uh, I knew some people who worked on the Galileo project and the PI of the near infrared mapping spectrometer mm -hmm. instrument said, uh, oh, you have all this training in volcanology and we need someone to uh, be in charge of the IO observations and the, um, the IO science. And, um, and he offered me the job. And I, I, I told him, oh, um, you know, I'd love it. The only problem is that I have never done any work with infrared spectroscopy. And he said, oh, it doesn't matter, you learn. And I did. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and this kind of been the story of my career. I'm always learning something new. <laughs> Excellent. I like learning new things. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. So anyway, okay. so that's the Voyager Grand Tour. Um, Voyager was really, uh, uh, it, it still is a spectacular mission. It, it's amazing that um, it survives after so long. Uh, but um, 
Um, anyway, so when I came to JPL, that uh, was um, um, uh, right, uh, oh, it, uh, the, the flyby of Neptune was in August, and uh, I arrived in JPL in July. Okay. Uh, so immediately I saw all that excitement. Um, we used to have a lot of media uh, come to JPL because, of course, things were not online, uh, and there were all these media trailers everywhere. Uh, it was it was incredibly exciting, and that's when uh, Voyager um, uh, two discovered um, the plumes at Triton. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, here in the article, I go a little bit um, into how. Um, cryovolcanism work? Well, the short answer is that we're not sure. Uh, there, there is a, a density problem. Um, we all know that ice cubes float. So you have an ocean of liquid water under an ice crust. And how do you get that liquid water up through the ice? Well, uh, that's a bit of a problem. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, we don't know exactly. There are various models. Uh, it depends uh, on on the density contrast, and and if you put ammonia and uh, mm -hmm. maybe methane in that water, it it it, it lowers the, that density contrast. You know, maybe you could get it to come up. Also, if you have impacts of meteorites, for example, in the crust, it's possible that the ice crust is not really pure ice, but is ice with other stuff, and it might be denser than uh, pure ice. Uh, it, so it just, could be so that just, to make, just to make sure I understand that, you know, so, so ice has a, a less density and underneath you got heavy stuff. And so even if you were to crack the ice, it's no right. guarantee that this heavy stuff is going to penetrate the lighter ice. Uh, unless, right. unless somehow it's under pressure or something like that. Yes, and that's one of the ways uh, that it could be happening is under pressure. Uh, maybe there are lots of bubbles, you know, gases um, uh, in that uh, uh, in that water. Uh, you know, maybe it's got ammonia, methane, um, etc. But there's still a lot to find to be found out that we need new data for. Um, so I go here into a, a little bit of that explanation. Mm -hmm. But if we go to the next page, um, uh, so uh, here is a picture of Europa. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, as I said before, Europa's surface looks a bit like that of a cracked egg. And, and Voyager noticed all these cracks. Then we did a lot more observations with Galileo. Uh, and, uh, and we think that that ice has cracked and brought material came up from underneath. And that's one of the things that makes Europa really exciting. Uh, and recently, I mean, the last few years, there have been uh, observations with the Hubble Space Telescope that found uh, plumes uh, coming out of Europa, or at least what appeared to be plumes. So maybe uh, cryovolcanism of similar type that Enceladus has is happening on Europa as well. Okay. Now, the really exciting thing is in these uh, ocean worlds uh, that have activity uh, like Europa uh, and Enceladus. Um, if you have liquid water, you have heat from volcanism. And if you have organic materials, those are three of the ingredients that you need for life. So there is a lot of um, uh, uh, thought that uh, maybe um, life could have developed in these oceans and Titan as well. And in fact, what my current work is on is on Titan and the habitability of Titan oh, awesome. uh, as part of the um, NASA Astrobiology Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of their selected proposals, and that's been really, really exciting work. Um, anyway, um, uh, Europa is uh, one of the, the prime candidates, and uh, we have a mission being mm -hmm. built now to um, uh, further explore Europa called the Europa Clipper, 
and we also have um, a Jewish, the Jupiter icy moons um, uh, explorer that uh, the European Space Agency is building. Uh, so we're not going to know more about Europa um, in the you know, next 10 years for sure. What is the, uh, is the plan still for the clipper to somehow dr drill through the ice? Or? Oh, no, no, no. Clipper is an orbiter. It's a Jupiter orbiter. Okay. Uh, so the mission you're thinking of is the Europa lander, ah. uh, but that mission uh, is in study phase. It has not been approved yet. Um, so that's, that's going to take somewhat longer. Uh, yeah. Clipper is actually being built cool. as we speak. Mm. Thank you. Mm. So um, we go on to the next page. Uh, and uh, uh, Voyager also found that uh, some other moons like um, Uranus uh, Ariel moon, um, it, it, it has all these valleys and, and, and folds and, uh, uh, and maybe that moon had cryovolcanism as well. You know, we have a number of candidates in the solar system uh, of uh, icy moons that, um, you know, may have had or may still be having um, uh, cryovolcanism. Uh, but um, uh, the, uh, uh, we have limited data uh, for um, uh, the moons of Uranus and Neptune's very limited data uh, from Voyager. Um, underneath here, uh, we have um, uh, features on Europa, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and the, this one was nicknamed the Mitten. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it looks like a place where there was some frozen slush. Uh, it, when this cryovolcanism comes to the surface, it, it can be just plumes and jets that would be like geysers, and they would not form features necessarily, like on Enceladus. But if it's actually a, a, a cryolava, if it's the slushy ice, mm -hmm. um, someone once compared it to a Slurpee. <laughs> uh, it, it, it will form features uh, on the surface. And, and this is one, this so-called mitten, is not a real name, uh, that um, may have been formed when that uh, cryolava uh, came to the surface. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the picture on the right that is actually a uh, color, uh, enhanced color, is in one, uh, from one of the linear uh, on Europa. And, uh, and you notice all these little sort of dots um, and uh, blobs uh, on, the, uh, on the fracture itself. Yep. You know, uh, uh, it's like a, like a string. Well, we can be romantic and call it string of pearls. Pearls, I was gonna say, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and those may be places where, uh, you know, again, a material uh, came up. Uh, so we have a lot of suspects uh, on Europa, some also on Ganymede. Europa and Ganymede uh, were also imaged by the Galileo mission. I also worked, you know, as I said before, I was hired to work on the Galileo mission, then I worked on Cassini. So, you know, I really had like a, you know, a, 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 a close involvement with um, uh, some of these discoveries, even though I was not working on Europa um, in particular. Uh, and, uh, and it's actually very interesting that when we uh, found out about Europa, about this ocean under the ice crust, uh, the, 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 the possible volcanism, the, uh, uh, the, the, the heat uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's no doubt happening uh, beneath the ocean. Uh, and all this, um, uh, uh, you know, there's um, um, uh, work about possibly uh, being a place where life could have evolved, uh, you know, uh, became known and widespread. That actually sealed the fate of Galileo because, um, you know, once the spacecraft was going to run out of fuel, one choice would have been to leave the spacecraft orbiting Jupiter, you know, forever without us being able to control it, but then there was a danger that it might one day crash into Europa mm. and the spacecraft was not sterilized uh -huh. uh, for Earth, you know, 
bugs. <laughs> so uh, we thought it was much safer to actually destroy, destroy the spacecraft by sending it into Jupiter. And the same thing happened years later at, with Cassini, uh, because again, Cassini found yep. Enceladus and Titan uh, might um, uh, uh, have life. Uh, so it's interesting that the, this discoveries uh, of spacecraft uh, made by spacecraft also sealed their fate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so let's go to the next page. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here is Enceladus. Uh, so um, when we flew by with uh, Cassini started getting images, uh, we noticed these uh, uh, fractures uh, in the ice crust, uh, these bluish uh, fractures. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they were nicknamed Tiger Stripes because they look like Tiger Stripes, uh, not an official name. Uh, the official names are there, you know, Damascus, Baghdad, Cairo. Uh, and, uh, and, and there had been a lot of thought, uh, even before Cassini, that Enceladus might be the source of one of Saturn's rings, the E-ring, uh, because Enceladus was right smack uh, inside that ring. Uh, there was, you know, a lot of thoughts that it might have cryovolcanism and it seemed like very, very, is a very bright surface, very fresh ice. Uh, but it really was uh, with Cassini that we found out and the first hint actually came from the magnetometer, you know, uh, uh, because there was some kind of distortion of the magnetic field uh, mm. uh, near the South Pole of, uh, of Enceladus, and it was like, you know, people scratching their heads. Um, mm. So we decided to do a flyby that our navigators actually took us closer. I believe it was 170 kilometers, I think I say in the article. Um, and I remember that meeting with the project manager that, uh, you know, as part of the satellite team, um, we were arguing for a closer look. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, then uh, when we did that in 2005, uh, first uh, one of the infrared instruments uh, found that these uh, fractures were hotter than the surrounding surface. Mm. Uh, so again, uh, implying that, uh, you know, some kind of volcanism was going on there. And then the um, camera, uh, found uh, uh, plumes. Uh, and here below you can see a, a beautiful image uh, of uh, these jets. We call, we call the overall thing a plume and the uh, individual bits uh, jets. Uh, and they, you can think of them a bit like geysers, you know, which is what the you know, diagram on the, right, on the right is saying. And the, the exciting thing um, is that there's um, uh, uh, materials coming directly from the ocean of Enceladus. So um, if you would do an Enceladus, you know, uh, plume flyby sample collector, uh, or if you had a lander right there, uh, you don't need to drill to the ocean to get this material, you know, it's just coming at you. Sure. So that makes it very exciting. So let's go to the next page. One question uh, on this image: What's the uh, what's the link scale here? So so what are sort of the heights of these? Uh, 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 well, you know, um, uh, it, it, that um, you know, I would say like uh, you know, tens of kilometers. Tens of kilometers. Um, yeah, I I don't know the you know the um, the exact. Um, uh, the exact number. That's okay. Um, Just looking for rough scale. That's yeah. Fine. Cool. Okay. I mean, Enceladus is a little moon, uh, so uh, uh, it, it was actually very surprising that um, um, you know it was so active. Well, here on this page, we we get to Triton. Triton is one of the most fascinating moons or objects in the solar system, and this is a, a, a Voyager two image. Uh, on the top, uh, and um, uh, Voyager 2 image, just the southern uh, hemisphere, 
uh, and uh, showed uh, a variety of terrains that um, looked cryovolcanic. Uh, but the really exciting thing uh, came here uh, in the uh, middle image. You see the dark streaks. Uh, those um, um, uh, uh, are actually, you know, plumes um, uh, from the southern um, uh, region of Enceladus. Yeah. Uh, and sorry, uh, Triton. <laughs> and, and, and this was just so fascinating. And people started um, trying to find out, well, is it, you know, uh, really cryovolcanism in the sense of, uh, you know, heat bringing material from the interior to the surface or, uh, and another theory um, was put put forth that um, you actually have uh, a lot of nitrogen on Titan and nitrogen ice uh, and uh, nitrogen ice might form uh, uh, like a transparent cover uh, in some of these regions and then the sun uh, heats up the material underneath and causes like a greenhouse effect and then you know eventually it sort of blows up uh, so maybe it's is an effect of the sun, is not really cryovolcanism. There are so many questions uh, about uh, Enceladus. Uh, uh, sorry, about Triton. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, there is terrain, as you see in the bottom image, um, this is called cantaloupe terrain. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but there are smooth areas that we think that uh, it was material flooding from underneath. Um, so there is uh, other evidence rather than just the plumes uh, that um, uh, the, uh, you know, cryovolcanism actually happened. You know, the, the cryovolcanism that we, we know and love uh, and not just a solar effect. But that's still an unknown. And uh, only another mission to Triton will be able to answer that question, uh, and uh, or, or a mission to Neptune. But mm -hmm. you know, Triton is is one of my favorite places. It's really fascinating. Indeed. Um, uh, so um, uh, you know, and there are other bodies um, uh, on Pluto. We actually. Um, uh, found a couple features that uh, may be cryovolcanoes. So I s might have an image of it. I can't remember. Go to the next page. Um, yes. Um, so on the left here uh, is uh, right Mons, uh, this circular feature that may be a cryovolcano. And then on the right here, um, uh, this is from my work. It's um, a uh, possible cryovolcano on Titan called the uh, Doom Mons. Um, that uh, is, um, uh, we, we were lucky enough to have two radar passes. The, the data we acquired uh, for this was with radar, and I was working on the radar team with the, um, um, uh, the, 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 you know, we used the synthetic aperture radar mode that can give you images. And um, uh, in, uh, we, we, we saw uh, an image of an area that we thought looked a cryovolcano with flows, uh, but, you know, it was kind of like, uh, you know, maybe. And uh, we were very lucky to actually have two radar passes which crossed over one another. And, um, um, and my colleague, Randy Kirk, in the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, who's a genius at these things, you know, with his team, uh, they were able to use this overlapping crossing pa uh, pa uh, passes uh, to do uh, a kind of radar clinometry that, that's like a photo clinometry. You can get three dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we got this digital uh, elevation model and that revealed that Dumont's is actually uh, a mountain, uh, the peak is over a kilometer high and the uh, and the pit uh, 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 that you, you you see in the center of this image mm -hmm. um, yeah right there is over a kilometer deep and uh, you know and, and there are other features that um, um, you know coming towards you from this volcano is actually um, 
uh, features that look like cryolava flow. So this was really, really exciting. And it's the best evidence that we have for a cryovolcano on Titan. Uh, there the, are- The colors other, there also indicate uh, different compositions, right? Yes, that's right. The colors uh, are from the uh, visible and infrared mapping spectrometer, and they, they indicate that the you know, proposed volcano and its flows have different composition from the surrounding uh, materials. The surrounding materials are shown in blue. Uh, so there is a lot of evidence that this is a, a cryovolcano, cool. but we never detected any um, uh, thermal activity. Uh, and, um, and of course, Titan has a very dense atmosphere, so it would be very difficult to detect the gassing. Uh, although there were some surface changes detected um, uh, by the VIMS instrument, the visible and infrared mapping spectrometer, uh, in this region was uh, work done by my former postdoc, Anezina Solomonidou. Um, and, um, uh, you know, so we, we think that this is really a cryovolcano, but, you know, it, uh, I'd, I'd love to get that you know, confirmation. Yep. Uh, and, uh, but um, the, the more we explore the outer solar system, the more we seem to find that cryovolcanism is an important process. So who knows what the new missions will bring us. Cool. So that'll uh, bring us to the end of this lovely article. So, so Rosalie, you hinted a couple of times, particularly on this, this last image, so, so where do we go over the next five to 10 years? Um, you know, what's in the pipes with NASA and what would you like to see if you were waving your magic wand and um, having missions for ice volcanoes? Uh, well, um, uh, we have two missions that I mentioned before, the Europa Clipper and, um, uh, and the um, uh, JUICE, which is the European uh, mission. Uh, they are both going to explore the Jupiter system. Uh, Europa Clipper is very focused on Europa, and I think that's going to answer a lot of questions about Europa. Um, the uh, European mission, JUICE, is going to uh, go into orbit around Ganymede, so that's another uh, ice moon with possible cryovolcanism that we didn't talk much about. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and those missions are um, uh, going to arrive there uh, in the end of the 2020s, uh, mm -hmm. if all goes well. Uh, so in the next 10 years, we should find out a lot more about the Jupiter system and, and cryovolcanism there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there is one other mission um, uh, that uh, is being built, uh, and that's Dragonfly. That's a very exciting mission. Uh, and the principal investigator is Elizabeth Turtle, you know, friend and collaborator of mine. And that mission uh, is going to put like a drone on the surface of Titan huh. <laughs> uh, and fly around. I mean, very it's nice. really a very, very, nice. very cool mission. Very nice. Uh, I, now, so that, that's approved, you know, that's uh, uh, going to go. And now, um, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get to the um, uh, Dumont's area. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if it's going to get to any candidate cryovolcanic um, areas, but it's going to tell us a lot more about the surface of mm -hmm. Titan. Mm -hmm. I think we still need um, a Titan orbiter to actually, uh, you know, map the whole surface. You know, Dragonfly will have limited range, um, and uh, you know, maybe you know that will happen uh, in the next you know couple of decades. Uh, these missions to the outer solar system take a long time. There is one mission that's being proposed and is in competition now for the NASA Discovery Program, and that's a mission to Triton. And I'm very excited about that. And, uh, um, and, and, and that mission um, will actually, you know, solve uh, the, these questions, un answer these questions uh, about whether Triton is an ocean world, uh, whether um, uh, these plumes 
uh, you know, are they still in the same place as they were with Voyager? You know, are they in different places? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the ones um, that Voyager detected were right at this subsolar point, which, you know, makes mm -hmm. it, that, that's where, right where the sun is hitting the surface, which makes, yes. makes it somewhat likely that it may be a solar effect. Yes. But if the mission finds that the plumes are in other places, um, uh, you know, or they stayed in the same place, but the subsolar point has moved, you know, then it, it, it's really going to make the case for cryovolcanism. Right. You know, unfortunately, to get the Triton, you actually, you, you would need to launch, um, you know, in the next, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but certainly the next 10 years because of the seasons changing, ah. um, you know, so, uh, you know, I hope they, I'm not on the team, but I hope they do a really good job uh, because otherwise we're going to have to wait a long time yes, uh, to, to do this test uh, for, for the plumes. Mm -hmm. um, so there are exciting things uh, in the works and um, NASA is, uh, well, actually they commissioned a decadal survey of planetary science from the National Academies yes. and that's just starting. And uh, so this decadal survey is going to set the priorities um, for the next decade. And uh, uh, we'll see what they say. That is fantastic. Fantastic. Rosalie, I want to thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us and walking through your lovely article and talking about future NASA mission. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.